Why do we need to manage our resources? Not just roads and buildings, but all the things we use or consume. Food, clothes, books, toys, furniture, tools, and vehicles are obtained from resources on this earth. The only thing we get from outside is energy which we receive from the sun. Even this energy is processed by living organisms and various physical and chemical processes on the earth before we make use of it. Why do we need to use our resources carefully? Because these are not unlimited and with the human population increasing at a tremendous rate due to improvement in health care, the demand for all resources is increasing at an exponential rate. The management of natural resources requires a long-term perspective so that these will last for the generations to come and will not merely be exploited to the hilt for short-term gains. This management should also ensure equitable distribution of resources so that all, and not just a handful of rich and powerful people, benefit from the development of these resources. Another factor to be considered while we exploit these natural resources is the damage we cause to the environment while these resources are either extracted or used. For example, mining causes pollution because of the large amount of slag which is discarded for every ton of metal extracted. Hence, sustainable natural resource management demands that we plan for the safe disposal of these wastes too. Three R's. We need not feel powerless or overwhelmed by the scale of the problems because there are many things we can do to make a difference. You must have come across the three R's to save the environment, reduce, recycle and reuse. Reduce. This means that you use less. You save electricity by switching off unnecessary lights and fans. You save water by repairing leaky taps. You do not waste food. Can you think of other things that you can reduce the usage of? Recycle. This means that you collect plastic, paper, glass and metal items. Recycle these materials to make required things instead of synthesizing or extracting fresh plastic, paper, glass or metal. In order to recycle, we first need to segregate our wastes so that the material that can be recycled is not dumped along with other wastes. Does your village, town or city have a mechanism in place for recycling these materials? Reuse This is actually even better than recycling because the process of recycling uses some energy. In the reuse strategy, you simply use things again and again. Instead of throwing away used envelopes, you can reverse it and use it again. The plastic bottles in which you buy various food items like jam or pickle can be used for storing things in the kitchen. Everyday Choices of Management Even while making everyday choices, we can make environment-friendly decisions. For doing this, 
We need to know more about how our choices affect the environment. These effects may be immediate or long-term or long-ranging. The concept of sustainable development encourages forms of growth that meet current basic human needs while preserving the resources for the needs of future generations. Economic development is linked to environmental conservation. Thus, sustainable development implies a change in all aspects of life. It depends upon the willingness of the people to change their perceptions of the socio-economic and environmental conditions around them and the readiness of each individual to alter their present use of natural resources. Sustainable Management We need to consider if the goals of all the above stakeholders with regard to the management of the forests are the same Forest resources are often made available for industrial use at rates far below the market value, while these are denied to the local people. The Chipko Andolan, Hug the Trees movement, was the result of a grassroots level effort to end the alienation of people from their forests. The movement originated from an incident in a remote village. People's Participation in Forest Management In 1972, the West Bengal Forest Department recognized its failures in reviving the degraded Sal forests in the southwestern districts of the state. Traditional methods of surveillance and policing had led to a complete alienation of the people from the administration resulting in frequent clashes between forest officials and villagers. Forest and land-related conflicts in the region were also a major factor in fueling the militant peasant movements led by the Naxalites. Accordingly, the department changed its strategy making a beginning in the Arabari forest range of Midnapur district. Here, at the instance of a far-seeing forest officer, A.K. Banerjee, villagers were involved in the protection of 1,272 hectares of badly degraded Sal forest. In return for help and protection, Villagers were given employment in both silviculture and harvesting operations, 25% of the final harvest, and allowed fuel wood and fodder collection on payment of nominal fee. With the active and willing participation of the local community, the Sal forests of Arabari underwent a remarkable recovery by 1983. A previously worthless forest was valued rupees 12.5 crores. Water harvesting. Watershed management emphasizes scientific soil and water conservation in order to increase the biomass production. The aim is to develop primary resources of land and water to produce secondary resources of plants and animals for use in a manner which will not cause ecological imbalance. Watershed management not only increases the production and income of the watershed community, but also mitigates droughts and floods and increases the life of the downstream dam and reservoirs. Various organizations have been working on rejuvenating ancient systems of water harvesting as an alternative to the mega projects like dams. These communities have used hundreds of indigenous water saving methods to capture every trickle of water that has fallen on their land. Dug small pits and lakes put in place simple watershed systems, 
built small earthen dams, constructed dikes, sand and limestone reservoirs, set up rooftop water collecting units. This has recharged groundwater levels and even brought rivers back to life. Water harvesting is an age-old concept in India. Khadars, tanks and nadis in Rajasthan, Bandharas and Thals in Maharashtra, Bundis in Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh, Ahar and Pines in Bihar, Kuls in Himachal Pradesh, Ponds in the Kandi Belt of Jammu region, and Aries, that is tanks, in Tamil Nadu, Surangans in Kerala, and Kattas in Karnataka are some of the ancient water harvesting, including water conveyance structures, still in use today. Water harvesting techniques are highly locale specific and the benefits are also localized. Giving people control over the local water resources ensures that mismanagement and over exploitation of these resources is reduced or removed. In largely level terrain, the water harvesting structures are mainly crescent shaped earthen embankments, low straight concrete and rubble check dams built across seasonally flooded gullies, monsoon rains fill ponds behind the structures. Only the largest structures hold water year round, most dry up six months or less after the monsoons. Their main purpose, however, is not to hold surface water, but to recharge the groundwater beneath. The advantages of water stored in the ground are many. It does not evaporate, but spreads out to recharge wells and provides moisture for vegetation over a wide area. In addition, it does not provide breeding grounds for mosquitoes like stagnant water collected in ponds or artificial lakes. The groundwater is also relatively protected from contamination by human and animal waste. An Overview of Natural Resource Management Sustainable management of natural resources is a difficult task. In addressing this issue, we need to keep an open mind with regard to the interests of various stakeholders. We need to accept that people will act with their own best interests as the priority. But the realization that such selfish goals will lead to misery for a large number of people and a total destruction of our environment is slowly growing. Going beyond laws, rules and regulations, we need to tailor our requirements individually and collectively so that the benefits of development reach everyone now and for all generations to come.